Welcome to another episode of the High Altitude Training Institute. My name is Greg Roberdio, and this is week 12 of the Beginner's Half Marathon Training Plan. If you haven't watched the introduction video, I highly recommend that you do so. That video will give you information about three separate things. The first one is which of these training plans should you be following? We have a beginners, we have an intermediate, and we have an advanced training plan. The second thing is figuring out where you should be starting your training in these videos. This is a 20 week program, but maybe all you need is 16 weeks. So go on the website and figure out where you should be starting this plan. And finally, the last thing that it will do is help you with the pace. Which pace should you be doing on your easy run? Which pace should you be doing on your long run, on your tempo run, and all of that? That's all gonna be in the introduction video. So go ahead and check it out. The link will be in the description below. By now, your long runs are getting longer and longer, which means that now you have an opportunity to actually practice your nutrition as it will be during race day. Now, the first thing that you need to do is go to the race website that you're completing and find out what kind of nutrition will be available at the aid station. And also, you need to find out how far each of the aid stations are going to be. Now, on road races, aid stations are fairly close to each other. On ultra marathons, they can be a lot further away. So you need to figure out exactly where the aid stations are gonna be, and again, what they're gonna be carrying. Now, throughout your training, you'll figure out what kind of nutrition you wanna eat. And there's a lot of different options out there. There is the natural food, where you're gonna be eating something like a fruit, or something like a, a PB&J sandwich, or something that works for you that, you that your stomach can digest. Some people prefer to eat other types of food, like gels, for example, or some people like having some kind of nutrition that's gonna be in their water bottle, so every time they drink, they actually get the calories that they need in order to complete the race. All of this doesn't come overnight. You have to practice your nutrition during your training runs. That's the reason why we do the long training runs. It's not only to get used to the distance, but it's also to get used to the type of nutrition that works for you and doesn't work for you. I'll tell you what works for me, but again, this is a personal thing. It doesn't mean that it's gonna work for you. If I'm gonna do a shorter run, I like the gels. The gels, for me, are fairly easy to digest. Now, not all gels are created equal. I've tried the Goo, I've tried the Hammer Nutrition gels, and I've also tried the Honey Stingers. Quite frankly, I prefer the Honey Stingers these days, just because I think the flavor is a little bit more natural. It actually tastes like honey, and they have them with a different taste. Uh, they have the orange taste, they have the natural taste. Now, I'm in no way associated with Honey Stinger, so you can get whatever you want, but give it a shot. If you're gonna go with gels, then this is what you uh, should be trying. Now. The gels are good for a shorter distance. If I do a half marathon or anything less, then gels is the only thing that I'm gonna take on top of water. Maybe, and then say maybe, at the end of a race, if I start to feel a little bit of a bunk, then I'm gonna take some Gatorade. But most of the time, it's just gonna be clear water and a gel, or a few gels every so often, every 45 minutes in general. If I'm moving to the next category, then like marathons and ultra marathons, and ultra marathons are a completely different uh, world. But in a full marathon, then I'm gonna go with something more solid. I'm gonna take a cliff bar, maybe, and that I'm gonna be eating little by little throughout the run. And then depending on what's at the aid station, I may be eating something there. In the ultra marathon world, it's completely different. I'm gonna eat whatever is at the aid station and I'm gonna to try to stick with fruits. Usually they have fruits in there. Those are good sugars that I can take and give me that extra boost. I'm still gonna do my gels and also in my hand bottle, I'm gonna do Tailwind. Now Tailwind is this powder that you mix with water and it's pretty high in calories. Again, I'm not associated with Tailwind, but a lot of ultra runners and marathon runners really like Tailwind. If you're a slower runner, then you have to really consider how much time are you going to spend on the course which means that if you spend more time you're going to have to get more calories in before the end of the race so tailwind for me is not necessary during a half marathon but it may be necessary for you if that's the way that you want to go so again you got to practice start running on your long runs and figure out how soon do you feel like you're losing energy how soon do you feel like that you're starting to get that bunk and that wall
If it's at mile eight, then it means that at mile five, maybe or at mile six, you need to start eating something. If you wait until you start bunking, it's too late. It means that you miss your nutrition spot way back. I've done races, including half marathons when I first started doing them, where I felt great and all of a sudden, boom, hit the wall. If you're a fairly new runner, even if you're an intermediate or an advanced runner, mile 10 is most, of, most likely where it's gonna happen. Mile 10 is the equivalent of mile 20 during the marathon, that's when you hit the wall. But just keep that in mind, go out there and practice, whether it's gonna be, again, drinking your calories or eating your calories through gels, through natural food, through a cliff bar, through whatever it is that works, go out and try and take notes. If you notice that something worked for you and gave you a lot of energy for the entire long run, that's the way to do it. Write down how often you took your food and then how much you took and that's what you need to do on race day. So keep practicing, keep bringing different types of food, different types of liquids and uh, experiment and see what works for you. And when you're done, please leave a comment and let us know what worked for you during those long runs so that other people can learn from it. Now let's take a look at this week's training plan. We're now in the middle of phase two and the total mileage for this week will be 21 miles. We have 12 weeks until race day and if you've been with us from the beginning, this is week nine out of 20. This week on Monday and Tuesday, we'll have easy runs, three miles and three and a half miles. Wednesday will be a rest day. And then on Thursday, we'll do three times one mile at half marathon pace. And we'll take one minute rest in between these half marathon pace runs. At the end of the workout, we'll go ahead and do two times 200 with our repetition run pace and 200 jog recovery. So we'll do half a lap at uh, repetition pace and then half a lap of jog recovery. By the end of the workout, with the warm-up and cool-down, this will be five and a half miles total. On Friday, we will have a rest day, and then on Saturday, an easy run of, six, of three miles. And finally, on Sunday, we'll have one of those marathon pace run, one mile easy to warm up, four miles at marathon pace, and then followed by one mile easy, and that's a total of six miles for that very last run of the week. As always, please give us a like, leave us a comment if you have any question, and don't forget to subscribe. We have a lot more videos coming up for you in the near future. If you want more information about the High Altitude Training Institute and what we do, please go ahead and visit www.altitude.run. You'll find that we do offer coaching, and we also offer a custom training plan for other distances. And finally, we offer summer running camps at high altitude in the summer in Arizona. Join us, find out more information, and we will see you next week. Have a great week of training.